there's a lot of information contained in even the most basic of things that we've been probably playing since forever. So take for instance this open G chord. It's rooted on the sixth string, and we get this this G uh, this G note right underneath it. We have this B note, and we have the open D string that's right underneath that. If we transpose those three notes on top of this really simple major scale pattern, we realize that we're playing the root, the third, and the fifth of the G scale. Nothing new here. This has existed since the dawn of time. But what we can learn from that is that we have this root, third, fifth pattern that occurs naturally, just like that. And everywhere there's a G note, we have that major triad. Um, and this allows us to arpeggiate. And then you can come up with you can come up with little licks like that uh, just by knowing that under any root note you have a third right there and a fifth just above it. So that's the first thing that we learn. Now, and this works obviously with any note. Take any given note, whatever note this is, you get the root, the third and the fifth right there. Any note. Um, so if you're playing over uh, any chord that is a major chord, so this A major chord, you can easily get uh, to that arpeggiated uh, triad that I showed you. Now what happens if it's a minor chord? Uh, well, your minor chord, you simply take this major third and flatten it by one fret. Now that makes for a really wide pattern. But the other thing that we can also learn is that any note is found about five frets higher on most strings um, on the string preceding that. Is the same thing as so there's your minor triad. And coincidentally, if you're rooted on this G, G note here, this pattern looks oddly familiar to something that you probably already know. And the same principle applies. So that's an easy way to go get uh, some triads out of a really basic pattern based on that. Now if we return back to our G chord, we've played the G note, the B note, and the D note, and we essentially have a G chord by just playing those three notes. What is it that we play? Um, what's the rest of the strings? So the rest after that is this open G string. So that's uh, the third octave of G, the second octave and the third octave. Then we're playing another uh, D note here. And finally here I'm playing another G note. So all in all I've got a total of three G notes in there covering three different octaves. And why do we play these chords? Because we're covering a lot of sonic, uh, a lot of space in the audible spectrum. Now the spectrum of, of sounds that we hear, the meat and potatoes is really carried between about 50 hertz and about 2600, 27, 3000 hertz. Above that there's a lot of presence information that's found, but the, the bulk of the, of the music that we listen to is found within that really narrow spectrum. Now if you're alone playing your guitar, this G chord fills out a lot of space. If you're singing on top of it, it sounds great. But what can we learn from that? Well, if you're playing with a band uh, and you have a keyboard player, or a bass player, maybe you have another guitar player, or you have a saxophone or something like that, it might not be desirable to take up so much space in the sound frequency. If you're playing uh, music in a band, the airwave is your medium uh, to cover your information. And playing a G chord, you're taking up a lot of space. And if you're fighting with other people, it might be worth your while to just play triad. So playing a G major triad like that takes up a lot less sonic space than if you're just playing that. So I've got this tool called Spectroid, and it generates a heat map of the sounds that it's picking up. Now you can see the frequency range here from 10 hertz all the way up to 10 kilohertz. 
Hey, if you're liking this video and you're finding value in it, please consider doing those things that YouTube people do, the likes and the subscribes and dropping a comment. I don't get paid to do these videos. I don't have a Patreon. I'm not selling you anything. It takes a lot of hours to make these videos. I'm just trying to help out. So drop me a comment. And if this video was not for you, you think it's the lamest thing ever, feel free to just move along. All right, thanks. 10 kilohertz, not a whole lot of useful information beyond that. Um, now, as you can tell, the louder I speak, the louder, um, the, I guess, the lighter that these waves are drawn out. And as you can tell by my voice, it's not just one frequency. It's a set of cascading frequencies, which are called, you know, second order, third order, fourth, fourth order harmonics. As I'm talking, most of my frequency here is in the just above 100 hertz here. And there's a, a, a second order harmonic here at 200 and there's you know way more. Look at that, right? So just to demonstrate how much sonic space is taken up by our guitar, I'm just going to play this G note here. So this is just an ordinary G note. Now you can see that its, it's bass frequency is just under 100 hertz here, but there are overtones here and here and here and here and here and here. In fact, if I just play that one note once again, Look at all the information, especially what's happening here in the really, really low end frequencies. There's a lot of information that's produced there. Now I, I have a bit of delay and a bit of flanger um, in, in my tone, but it's, it's not different from how any guitar player would set their tone. So even just playing this one G note, the bass frequency is very heavy, but then there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Now let's go ahead and play root third fifth and you can essentially see all three notes cascaded you know the G the the B and the D note one after the other and if I can stop talking for just long enough look at all the information in that I mean that's pretty heavy if we press pause on that for just a second I mean, there's there's a lot of harmonics going on in here, and especially in these these low um, in these low frequencies here. Now let's continue and let's play the whole uh, G chord in its entirety. So as you can imagine, I mean, you can even hear it as I'm talking. There's not a whole lot of space in there. And if we compare that to a so that is our G bass triad look at all the space that we've liberated So this allows you to position where your instrument fits in with even just one note. Now your bass player is, if, if your bass player is playing a G note, they're probably playing it down here at 50 hertz. So you're not overlapping too much uh, with that one string. If you decide to play a G chord on top of it, just a G and a five, you're still freeing up a lot of the top end for your drummer and keyboard player uh, and a lot of the cymbals here. They have a lot of room to breathe compared to that. G chord, which really interferes with what your cymbals and, and your, your snare is going to do up here. So use this tool in your next band practice. If you're practicing a band, use this tool in your next band practice to see which, which of the frequencies are the hottest ones and which ones are actually creating mud because you're playing a lot of the same frequencies with a lot of, same, a lot of the same instruments. There's a lot of information out of the good old uh, power chord that makes up the foundation of rock. So this is essentially a root note and its fifth, and that matches up with the major scale root note and its fifth. And most of the time, the players will add in another finger here to cover another root note. So what does that teach us? Anywhere on the fretboard that you have a given root note, its fifth is just a power chord away. Um, and under a fifth note, you have another root note. And likewise, on top of any root note, let's say you take this A note here, well, you know that on top of it is a fifth. So 
root fifth root fifth root fifth I've had to adjust here for that that B string that is tuned uh, half a step lower and that's an easy way to discover octaves. The, the typical pattern for an octave is two frets over and two strings down. Obviously adjust for that B string, but if you got an A note here, you've got an A note there. Two frets higher, two strings down, your A note there. So if we return back to the concept of triads that we're talking about, um, the first three strings provide a really good backbone for playing triads. And in fact, a lot of the funk artists in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s uh, relied essentially on just these three strings to do triads on while the whole song was carried by uh, the bass player set in the groove. One thing to remember is that if you're, f if you're fretting something like this, a G chord that most people understand and know, you're hitting a D note, you're hitting an A note, you're hitting another D note, and this F sharp that's over here. Um, but if we just focus on the, the top three strings, our F sharp, our D, and our A note, we have a major triad for uh, the D. It's a D chord. And since we're fretting everything, what we can learn is that everything, every pattern that is fretted can be moved. So if this is a, G ma a, a D major triad, if we move it up by two frets, that's an E major triad, one fret, that's an F major triad, two frets is a G major triad. So compare this G major So if you're wanting to play a G major triad, but you don't want to take up all of the space sonically that that occupies, that's a really good option. So the same concept applies to minor chords. If we look at how a typical bar chord is played for uh, minor rooted on the sixth string, we can realize that we have all of our three notes um, uh, contained in the first, uh, second, and third strings on our on our guitar. Uh, so for instance, I have a G note here, right above it, I have a D note, and right above that, I have an E sharp, and that forms a G minor triad. G major, G minor. And of course, since we're fretting all three strings, A minor, B minor, C minor, and D minor are all found uh, the same way. Now in this case we're playing what is called inversions. Our root note, our G root note in this case, is on the bottom and typically the, the, the root note is on the top, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter which notes you, uh, which order you're playing your notes, it's all a triad. So in this case it's easy to just uh, root ourselves on the uh, first string. In fact, using the top three strings is a great way to inject some new life or some different life into that uh, good old cover song that you've probably been playing for the last five decades. <laughs> 